All right, everybody. So thank you all for being here. Once again, we've got a great ministry team to help out. And we've got our, our family that's been coming. You guys got ministered to one-on-one -on -one last time and almost this time again. But we've got Willow and her dad, Thomas. So thanks for coming, guys. Um, you know, I think I want the ministry team to introduce themselves. Will you introduce yourself? Just your name? Me? Yeah. I'm Jennifer. I'm Rita. Alyssa. Renju. I'm Brad. Pam. Yeah, Pam. <laughs> and Sister Kendra. <laughs> and that's Sister Stephanie in the back. And this is Sister Kelly. And my name's Erica. Okay, Willow? Okay, great. So today we're going to talk about why should I choose Jesus? What's the big deal? Right? You guys see things in the world that you want to do and everything looks fun. Why should we choose Jesus? Why should we be separated? Is that a question? Have you ever had that question before? Why should we follow Jesus? Okay. Well, I need a volunteer to read. You? Okay, Micah. Okay, read loud though. Okay. Right Go ahead. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Okay. So who's choosing who? <laughs> who's really choosing who? God's choosing us. Okay, great. And then what's he want to do? He wants us to go and bear fruit, right? Fruit that will last, so it's going to be enduring. We'll get into that's a whole other topic. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. He wants to give you good things. He wants to be a heavenly Father to you. And He chose you. Okay? But we have a responsibility. We have to answer. Right? God, why did you choose me? He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So before the world was even thought about, you were thought about, each one of you. So it wasn't just your mom and dad coming together and having a baby. The Heavenly Father chose you and specifically knew you and had a purpose for you and chose you. That's pretty big. That's a big deal. The living God wants you to know that he loves you and that he's chosen you. You guys know that? Yeah. Raise your hand if you know. Yeah. Do you guys know? Does my ministry team know? They know. Well, Kelly knows. Okay, me too. Oh, and look, I did this cool graphic so that because I was playing with my PowerPoint. Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay. This is a cute little video that I found. Have you heard, have you seen this guy? Yes. Okay, cool. I have it. Hey, you. Yeah, you, I'm talking to you. Did you know that you were chosen by God? That's, that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Hey, guys, it's me again, Douglas. And yeah, I had kind of a hard day at school today. Because at recess, I got picked last for dodgeball. Yeah, and I never get picked last because I'm, I'm pretty good at catching the ball. I, I love playing goalie in soccer, and if we're playing dodgeball, I just catch the ball like I'm playing soccer. But, uh, well, I have kind of a weakness. I think everybody figured that out. Is that, uh, you know, normally I can catch the ball, yeah, but if there's more than one ball coming at me, I just go, <gasps> and I freeze, and I get hit by all of them, and, and I'm out right away. And so now they just throw more than one ball at me, and so I got picked last. And that, that felt really bad. I didn't like being picked last. I used to get picked first. And it made me start to think, because, you know, nobody likes to get picked last. But, but, did you know that you and I were chosen by God? Yeah, God chose us special. We are his special possession. We are God's favorite. All of us. And you might say, well, no, if everybody is God's favorite, then nobody's God's favorite. No, it doesn't work like that. You are God's favorite you. And I'm God's favorite you. We were chosen by God. God picks us first every time. And so I may not be picked first in dodgeball anymore. And, and maybe I might not get picked first for other things in my life. But I can know that God will always choose me first. 
You know, Jesus loves us so much that he even died for us. Yeah, he gave his own life so that we could live with him forever and ever. That's how far Jesus would go to show us that he chooses us. And I think that that is really, really amazing. And I hope that you will understand deep down inside that you are chosen and valued by God. Hey, so I hope you like this. Cool. Who else do you know that would die for you? Any of you? You got somebody? Best friend that would die for you? No? Do you guys have anybody that you know that would just lay down their life for you right now? Somebody came in the room with a gun and they're like, oh, let me take it. I'll do it instead. Yeah. Right. So that's a big deal that Jesus did that. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. He's your friend. He calls us friends when we accept him, when we choose him back, when we accept the invitation that he's given us. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are one. They created all things. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So for me, this is a really big deal to know that the creator that has literally made everything, the universe, the planets, the stars, the puppies, the kittens, the rainbow, the winds, the seasons. He's so big, we can't even wrap our mind around him. He's three people in one. You know, when I think about a superhero like Superman, he's just a man. He's just a man. But when I think about God, he's got these amazing attributes. We can't even wrap our head around. And for whatever reason, he chose us. And he can give attention to each one of us individually at the same time, because he's such an incredible God. And I thought that that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So the creator wants to have a relationship with you, a personal relationship. What does Jesus offer? What do you think, Willow? <laughs> snacks? She says snacks. Gabrielle, what does Jesus offer? Love. Love. Okay. What else? Micah, I know you got an answer. What does Jesus offer us? Anybody? Isaiah? A relationship. Yep, a relationship. Ezekiel? Are you telling him answers, Micah? No. You did. What does Jesus offer us? Salvation. Salvation. That's a big word. That's true. Salvation. Okay, what else? What's Jesus called? The Prince of Peace. Peace, okay. What does he forgive? What does Jesus forgive? Sins. Sins, okay, so he forgives our sins. Okay. And when he forgives our sins and he brings us close to him, where do we end up going when we die? So we're allowed to go to the kingdom of heaven yeah. with our heavenly father? Okay. Okay. <laughs> she knows that. Amen. Does God have an army? Does God have an army? Yeah. Of who? Angels. Okay, so he has angels. angels. Psalms 91 says he has angels that'll even catch your foot so you won't dash your foot against the stone. So he'll send his angels to guard us, right? Yeah. Okay. So we got angels to guard us. What else do we have? Ministry team. What else do we have from Jesus? Joy. Joy. That's a big one. Friend. Healing. You guys said it at the same time. Do you guys remember any stories in the Bible of the Lord healing people? How many times did he do that? Paralyzed people, right? Guy with a withered hand that just grew out. What else? Kendra? <laughs> um, patience. 
patience. You guys are starting to name something called the fruit of the spirit. Ah, fruit of the spirit. Peace. Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. You got another one, Jen? Uh, long suffering. Long suffering, yep. And something that we're here for today, what does he offer us? Deliverance. Deliverance, which is freedom from what? Yeah, you, you raised your hand. Bondage. Bondage, great. Demons, oppression, negative emotions, bad feelings, right? So he's the deliverer. The deliverer. Awesome. Let's see what I wrote down. Let's see how many of these we got right according to what I wrote. Healing. We got that one. Angels to guard us. Protection. That's really important because there's a lot of wicked stuff out in the world. How about compassion? Didn't Jesus have compassion on a lot of people? He was always feeling, oh, so much compassion for people when he'd see them hurting. He was always willing to help those people that were hurting, that were crying out to him. You know, if you guys are hurting, you cry out to the Lord and he'll help you because he has compassion. Prosperity. I even forgot about this one. He helps prosper our lives. He wants to give us good things. He'll help us find a job. Right, Alyssa? Didn't he help you? Find an apartment. Yeah. What else? Rena, we know what he gave you. He gave her a dog. Do you want to tell them about that in, in two minutes? Sure. What happened? Come up here and tell them. They never heard your testimony. Uh, should I make it short? Yeah, short. Two okay. minutes. Um, so, like, for all of my life, I really wanted a dog. And I always, like, prayed about it. So I was like, God, can I please have a dog? Like, all of my life, ever since I was little, I was like, please, can I have a dog? And, like, I never actually had one for myself. I always had close family friends who had dogs, and I would, like, be close to their dogs. But never one for my own. And one day when we moved here, it was, like, in 2000. 19, I think, um, my mom got this prayer jar, and it was just like, write down your prayers and put it in, and I was like, all right, well, can I have the perfect dog at the perfect time? Because mm -hmm. I thought, like, I could have all these wants for a dog, but, like, God knows what the perfect dog is, so I'll just tell him I want the perfect dog, and God's timing is always the best timing, so I was like, at the perfect time. Hi. So then... I put it in there and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to leave it at that and I'm going to let um, God deal with the rest of it. And um, after that, I just left it alone and I didn't really ask for a dog ever again until, um, <laughs> until this past year, uh, my mom started looking into it and it was honestly the perfect timing because I had um, been going through a lot of stuff at school with the changes that were happening. And I really needed just like a friend to like come and love on me when I came home. And what do you know? Jack showed up, my little my little dog. He's a little multi food. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen him before. Um, and we got him for free. He was a rescue. And one of our friends had him and was like, do you guys want him? And we took him in. And we at first were just gonna try to see if he would fit in, but then he was just like attached to me. And so we're like, we're keeping him. And it was really just like awesome. The timing that God put him in my life, it was perfect. Like I asked for it and he asked for the, he gave me the perfect dog because like I secretly always wanted a dog who like wanted me the most out of everyone in my family, <laughs> which is selfish I get, but like, if you know something about dogs is that they usually, they love everyone in the family, but they usually pick one person they follow around. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be that person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wanted your dog. I wanted my dog. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he was that dog. I never said, I actually never voiced out that I wanted a dog like that. I, it was just like in my heart and he gave me that. He just, 
and he gave me a hypoallergenic dog, which I'm allergic to burn stuff, so that's perfect. Um, and he's super low maintenance, he's small, you can take him anywhere. He was always, he's already potty trained, which that's like a huge deal. And, you know, it's just, he was really perfect. The perfect dog at the perfect time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Rena. Isn't that encouraging? The Lord wants to give you good things. He wants to prosper your way. <clears throat> Fruit of the Spirit, we talked about that. He makes all things possible. What you guys think is impossible, the Lord can do. I've seen it in my life. These, these wonderful people have all seen it in their lives, and you guys have seen it in your own lives, and I know that for a fact because I've talked to you. <laughs> Deliverance, which is what we're here for today. What else does Jesus offer? Eternal life. Forgiveness of sin, to give us a relationship with our Heavenly Father. You guys said that one. Rescue us from hell. Give us mercy when we deserve punishment. And so much more. Rena, where'd that come from? <laughs> Rena actually is part of my teens group. And we were talking together about the same subject. And she said this. Do you want to read that? God does not have grandchildren. He only has children. Therefore, you can't get go to God through your mom and dad's relationship. You have to have a relationship with God. That's right. So it's a personal relationship. It's based on you and your Heavenly Father. If mom has a relationship, that's great. That doesn't make you a Christian. That doesn't make, make you a Christ follower. you got to choose Jesus back, right? So I really like that. Thanks. That's great. If you don't choose God, you choose the devil by default. That's just how it works. There's two kingdoms. If you do nothing with the Lord and, and Him inviting you, it's the same thing as rejecting Him. You have to answer the call. He's sending you out an invitation. You answer the call, and then you start walking that narrow path. And if you don't, the devil who gives temporary pleasures, temporary pleasures. What does that mean, Micah? Do you know? It means something that doesn't last, right? You have it for a, a little bit. You might be happy for a little bit, and then it's gone. He takes it from you. He gives you just enough to reel you in, and then he takes it away. The temporary pleasures. He's the father of lies. He's proud. He's fierce and cruel. He is powerful. He's a powerful being. Without the Lord, we can't stand against the devil. We cannot do it. He is a powerful being. He's deceitful. He deceived Adam and Eve in the garden, sold us all down the the path of hell and sin. He's very subtle like the serpent, right? He came in the form of a serpent and he was sneaky. And he is the devourer. He'll eat everything in your life that is good and he will take it down to nothing. His main goal is to destroy us and we need Jesus on our side so that we can overcome that. Satan is a created being. So remember when I was talking about Superman? Come on. I'm not going to serve the creation. I'm not going to serve something that the Almighty God created. I want to serve the, the one that created everything. Why would you want to serve the creation and not the creator? Romans 1.25 says, They changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So we want to be serving the creator. I don't want to serve second best. If I'm in a race, if you're in a race, Micah, and I give you an option. Do you want to choose number one place, number two place, or number three place? Which one do you choose? Number one? Okay, great. Cool. That's my answer, too. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Isaiah, which would you prefer, to be stolen from? To be killed and destroyed, or to have abundant life and peace? Abundant life. Yeah, I think so, me too. What about you, Gabriella? Abundant life and peace? Ezekiel? Abundant life and peace? Yeah, me too. Okay, God's call. Hebrews 3.15, as it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion. We don't need to be rebellious. We need to answer the call. Don't harden your hearts against the Lord. When you hear him calling, answer the call. Matthew 22:14 says, For many are called, but few are chosen. 
You got to answer the call, right? God invited you. He called you. What will you do? Choose to show him you accepted the invitation. That's it. We got to answer the call. So today, you know, we all have struggles in our lives. We all have things that we don't quite understand what's going on or we need advice. We need questions answered. That's why I do this. When I was a kid, I had a lot of questions I needed answered and my parents couldn't answer those questions. So I went to the world asking the same questions and they gave me answers. The answers they gave me were lies and I lived in those lies for a very, very long time. And I was totally deceived and I didn't even know it until a couple years ago. That's a sad life. That's sad to have to live that. But you guys are so young and you have the opportunity to learn now and ask those questions and get free of those bondages and see how Jesus wants to show up in your lives. So what we're going to do today is we're going to pray with you. We're going to give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you want. And we're going to, you know, steer you in the right path and hopefully give you some guidance. So ministry team, if you guys want to help and pray with the parents and then the kids, that would be great. So I'll let you all start going around. And uh, Sister Kelly, I know you've got a little bit of time left still, so. Do you guys have any questions about this? Anybody? No? Okay, great. Okay, well. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time. We thank you for all the ministers here. We thank you that we're going to be able to pray with the parents and the children today. In Jesus' name, and Lord, we just invite you to have your way. We thank you, Father, for being able to gather here together and speak your truth through your word. And we thank you for the wisdom that you're giving us and growing us all. In Jesus' name, amen.